I wanted to talk to you guys about today. I just saw some more news that the New Mutants is getting, uh, I don't know, it's not getting pushed again, but they're starting to talk more about like the release times for it. And are you guys familiar with that one yet? I know I mean, of it. Well, I have no idea what you're talking about. The New Mutants? You haven't heard of that one yet? Nope. That, that is like, a is it Turtles movie. Or is it an X-Men game? All right. Because it was going to be one of those properties. Yeah. It's either going to be like Turtles or the X-Men. The only I think it's I, I open Turtles. I hate it when people do that. When they take like a property and they just like make it sh- like Titans. Like, all right. Like, <laughs> yep. It's, Okay, which property is this now? Like, fuck oh, yeah. you. Just the reason they were named longer so you can identify them. I see like, we're like, just postmodern trend of stripping shit away until there's yeah. nothing. Like when the X-Men just became men and then <laughs> uh, women got offended. <laughs> well, but they do have that uh, superhero show just called The Boys. Fuck that. That's a good show. <laughs> it looks great, actually. I really do want to watch it. It's fun. It's very fun. I really Season do. Season two coming I just, soon. I you just ever think, have HBO. Do you ever think of, like, as... As the internet gets older and as we progress through this society, that those single word titles are not going to work anymore because they w- would have all, all been used already. Each one's right? been taken. There's only there's a finite number of single words. Exactly. So you're going to have you're going to start getting permutations of words and then then it's going to become like who can come up with a more interesting, unique one. Right. It's kind of like video game, like in-game names. Right. Like the first the first few players get like fire and rain and all those like. <laughs> get sing- but then you, have to, then you have to get like, you know, Chadwick 49 or some, you know, gr- you know. Gregory underscore Rook 30. Man, the star of Black Panther, Chadwick Boseman, couldn't even get Chadwick 1. He had to get 49. There were 48 other Chadwicks. Chadwicks. It was the year he was born. So I don't know. Yeah, like that's what I mean. Like that's like that, that's why I, I keep saying like how about heroes and titans and fucking just single word single word titles for shows and movies. And it's like all right. I mean, you got to run out sometime, right? Let's let's get something different. What's with this minimalist aesthetic? Just so you can have one word on the poster. Well, that's a good question. Let's I get more the Birdman's is... or unexpected virtues of ignorances. <laughs> let's get some that's long a, ass that's titles. That's a good one. That's it. see that one's smart because in the long run, if someone else decides to make a Birdman film. It will still be distinct. It has the subtitle. Yes. See, that's smart. Inyadi too. See when they when when they should... make a when they make a live action Harvey Birdman and shorten exactly. it to just Birdman, we'll, exactly. we'll know the other one. It's a visionary. Still distinct. I think the the pro, the difference is with video games that they take it off of the the queue. You're not allowed to take that name twice. And we do have lots and lots of movies that are all named, you know, whatever. Impossible. Name one. Okay, so I'm writing a movie right now, <laughs> and I wanted to call it The Sins of Our Fathers. There's like nine The Sins of Our Fathers since like the 30s. <clears throat> so I have to keep changing the name and trying to make adjustments, and I have to keep Googling to be like, okay, when's the last time a movie was called this? I, I always, I love it when I, when I think of a turn of phrase, and I Google it, and it's never been used before in that order. Especially if it's common words, like not mm-hmm. that long, like three or four words, but they've never been, like, like lemon juice bond. Like that's... <laughs> Three word phrase has never been used anywhere before, right? That's three words. You know, Anywhere. someone like we could turn this into a game. We all come up with three words, and the person who has the most random string of three words that you know that you know gets. <laughs> so I'm just saying, you know, it's like we could do yeah, that. That that could be our podcast. That needs to <laughs> like be the opens new. Every week. That needs to be like the new thing everyone should be striving for. That is that should be <laughs> the new definition of excellence. But we live in a society that ignores such conventions. If only yeah, I was in society. Try. Anyway, how's everyone yeah. else? It's been a weird Friday. Fantastic. So here's keep... a picture yeah, every two minutes of the cast. And what I want to get at is that this was originally a who was it? Fox who's done. Is that Arya things? Stark? Yes. Wait, right. Yes. Yeah, it's our it's also um Is she uh, legal now? Can I do stuff to her? Oh god. <laughs> I think What's... as of the last season when she got naked, yeah. Sick. Oh yeah, she totally got naked. Yeah. yeah she fucks now. She... <laughs> Guys, Arya fucks now. It's fine. <laughs> Anya Joyce Taylor is in the front with the the frowny face um, from The Witch and uh, Split. Ah, that's where I recognize it from. That yeah. one kid in the back is obviously from Stranger Things, and I have no idea who the other two are. Um, the guy in the hat looks familiar. Oh, was the guy in the hat in Stranger Things? Maybe. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, he's from Stranger Things. Oh, I yes, don't know okay. about the other two. Uh, I assume the guy on the right is a, a stock handsome guy, and uh, yeah, I don't know what the the other one. 
Well, his name is uh, Henry Zaga. No idea. Any other girl's name is Blue Hunt. That's her real name? Okay. Part, it's, uh, one more time? Blue <laughs> Hunt. See, that's Blue? another. You add one more word to that, and yeah, you have a three-word <laughs> phrase that's never been used before. Oh, my god. Blue goodness. Hunt Dinosaur. Well, there you go. Is that <laughs> I look at Henry Zaga, and then it has a superhero name, which is Sunspot. And then it has the next girl, and her real name is Blue Karen. Hunt. And I was like, oh, that must have been her superhero name. <laughs> Ah, yeah. <laughs> well, the reason I'm bringing it up is that Fox used to own it and they were working on it. And then the sale happened in the middle of production, like post production. The first, well, the sale to Disney. The first trailer of it made it look like a horror movie. And that was really fucking interesting. To I remember me. that. Even, I saw that first trailer. Yeah. Right. So then if you look at the new ones, it really just kind of looks like a uh, first class again. Like there's kind of right. rehashing all that shit. I think it's. What I want to posit to you guys is we could theorycraft a little bit about the future of how to actually do like a fifth wave Marvel thing or how to extend DC or how to extend even Star Wars. I think that these franchises are so big and bloated now that they really should start going genre. And I think For a good sure. example of something like The Mandalorian being Star Wars, but really feeling like a Western. Right. I mean, I don't want to see these franchises continue to grow. Because I'm bored of them all. Yeah, can we? What if we just stop the franchise? Yeah, that's a, uh, that's we, a final solution to that problem. I 100 percent agree. I guess I'm doing the like the uh, you have a gun at your head. We have to yeah, continue. Yeah, yeah. You're replacing Paul Feig. You what know, do you do? How do you right? And so for me, I think that the best option, aside from the number one option being just end this motherfucking shit, like a long time ago, by the way, um, is that yeah, we go more genre and get out of like right now a superhero movie is basically its own genre. They always kind of go the same way, and they feel the same way. Um, we've seen exceptions, like Logan and Joker, and I think that going more genre like that could be a lot of fun. Did you guys, for instance, did you ever watch uh, The Animatrix? I have. It was a long time ago. Barely remember I have it. not. I, en- I remember enjoying it, though. Do you remember? One of them is 2D animated, and it's about a... It basically, they do like a noir detective story. And mm-hmm. it's like a failed... You know, yeah, no, that, that's a, that's a good. Uh, I mean, I, I enjoy that, but it also like the the subject matter lent itself well to that format. So I think that's why it worked. I don't think they could have made it into a rom com and still have it, you know, sold. For example, I think like you have to be careful what genres you try to shoehorn into your property. Like, there's no way you're gonna get like a noir Avengers story. That's just not gonna happen. Like, Not specifically the Avengers, but a noir where people have superpowers, I think could be done. You know, your bad guy has superpowers versus... I mean, even think about how they push things with, like, a, what's his face? Um, Robert Downey Jr.'s version of Sherlock Holmes. And he, yeah. like, slows down time and imagines blah, blah, blah. Like, we've played exactly. these guys stuff. having borderline superhero powers. Or even, like, Hobbs and Shaw. The Fast and Furious franchise is still technically in the real world, but the guys are, in essence, superheroes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like Rock Rock and Statham and Vin Diesel are. Yeah, they're ridiculous people. (laughs) Yeah. Everyone whose contract says they can only get hit five times in the whole movie. Most of those guys look like superheroes. Yeah, it's 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 weird because now you get this weird power creep that you have in video games where like as you continue patching and updating and balancing and making sure that all the heroes are balanced. You, everyone just gets too overpowered. Everything then, goes uh, up and up. Yeah, yeah. it's just get a little power creep. You're gonna get the same thing. That's just like everyone's gonna be a god, and it'll be boring. It totally. Is. Um, yeah, that's it's uh, literally happening. And well, and even like Marvel movies, like the first major threat is Loki, and in the movies, and then you, the next one is um, uh, fucking Robot Man. Oh, Ultron. All his, yeah, Ultron, and then. And then we have, you know, Thanos himself. It's, I don't even know where you would take the next big ad after Thanos. Like, it's kind of like that end all. Satan. They have to go Ooh, Satan. Yeah. They should fight God. Satan. Who's the other? Did they ever, who's the one who, he, uh, Galactus? Is he a big one? What it was, Galactus. have they done him? They kind of did. They already did Galactus in a Fox one because they used to own um, the Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four, they did it with that. Silver Surfer. But that's how about, not, uh, that's not how about Balactus and he's a and he's a brother. This is the greatest Balactus. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, it has to be Balak. It can't be Balactus. Balactus. No, Balactus. it's Balactus. <laughs> Balactus. That's fantastic. Well, like, um, did you? You probably didn't see this. There was an interview with uh, 
who are those guys? The Rock and the little black guy hangs out with Kevin Hart. Yeah, that's okay. um. <laughs> That this interviewer is asking them, and like some little black guy, he hangs out. With. <laughs> that's, 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 you knew exactly who I was talking about. Um, and the interviewer asked him, Hey, if you guys were in a superhero movie together, uh, who would you be? Um, and she's like, Rock being Black Adam. And he was like, Oh, uh, Kevin Hart would be a honky Pete. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's like, What would your superpowers be? He's like, Oh, I'd have pockets, I'd be the only superhero who has pockets. I'd be like, Give me that, just put it in my pocket. <laughs> So yeah, I don't know. I'm just tired of superhero movies. No, I totally am too. Um, but they're gonna go on forever. And so. Gail, I, I understand why you're tired of them. You see so many of them. <laughs> I see so many. I saw two in the past two three or four the... years. Yeah, that is. I just, so funny. I, just, I just hate the genre. I just think there's nothing yeah. to it. Like that's what I'm getting at, though. It is like, a genre. Come up with, like old man Scorsese with the theme park thing. You know, but like it just doesn't. I, 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 and I'm if people enjoy it, that's fine. Obviously, like people enjoy the experience and want to have that, then great, do that. But I is just, it fine, or should they be shamed for it? No, nah, I'm not gonna. I mean, I'm not gonna <laughs> shame for it. But you know, and that's and by the way, where, where where am I to bring the is ought discussion to a close by going? You know, it's fine. Therefore, we should or shouldn't shame them. I'm not in a position to make that distinction. <laughs> certainly, if David Hume wasn't, then I certainly. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, no, I mean, I just want to see more original stuff. That's, that's all. Like, and if, if it means, like, let's get these, let's put these superheroes in unusual situations, then fine. But why do they have to be superheroes? Why can't they just be, like... Because they're existing properties, and people no. are drawn to existing properties because people are dumb. That's and never going to change. Money. And they make... A, everyone yeah. they shit out makes a billion yeah. fucking dollars. The failures make insane are, amounts of money. I don't think people are dumb. I just think there's a lot of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't yeah. think... You know, like, I think, like... Because we're talking about international, like, you know, d- uh, gross, really, yeah. is what we're looking at. Like, international people are statistically they even still domestically kill, though. than domestic people. <laughs> <laughs> no, whatever. But they still domestically <laughs> kill. All right. Eh, I'm not American. I have no idea. Uh, I just so hear that's things. the thing, too, is also when you guys say, like, internationally, like, that includes America. <laughs> uh, but, no, like, you know, once you, once you, at a large enough, you know, breadth, then, yes, you get enough, quote-unquote, dumb people well, if you course, want yeah. to think they're dumb people by the way i think anyone can enjoy like kids enjoy like a lot of kids enjoy superhero movies so why not that's not doesn't make them dumb so if i mean their really, parents are sick, i mean so kids are dumb if you really don't want to say they're dumb, not dumb for kids but they're dumb for adults there's people who don't want to engage with difficult to interact with media and so yeah, whatever you want to call those people those people make up a large group of people there's always the going to be less people called. who want to work let's harder than best. people who want to work less the what the mentally retarded. Let's call them. That. <laughs> it's, um... it's a parasite where, like, you have a large, like, just so many people. Everyone saw that movie, and that's certainly not a easy watch. I would say, like, that's definitely a challenging film. It's ex- it's more accessible than like your, you know, run of the mill. Well, also, like, what does everybody saw that movie mean? Like, what did it mean? I don't know if everybody saw that movie. Every pretty much everybody saw that movie. Like, my parents saw that they movie. Made- you know, my sister saw that movie. Like, I'm trying to get away from like anecdotal though. <laughs> like, no, no, no. I mean, I got, 266 okay, million that, is really good. It's it's a lot of a, a lot more people saw that film, which which to me just says that you know there's an audience out there for there's a huge audience out there for like you know just you know original stories. But right? I think it's also a um, it's a bit of an anomaly. Like, it made 266 million, which is still 100 million less than Shazam made, and that was considered like a failure. You know, or it did okay. So it made a lot of money and a lot of people saw it, which is cool. But this isn't happening all the time. Like, what did a marriage story make? Uh, Marriage story made $87 domestically. Actually, what's really funny, I was looking at the budget for uh, 14 people saw it. $20.5 billion. And I was like, what? What (laughs) What are you talking about? It's because it's in like yen. Ah, okay. In like whatever Korean. Uh, Highest grossing movie of all time, Marriage Story. All right. Well, no, it was a, it was a parasite. It was oh, sorry, parasite. It was twenty billion, not highest <laughs> grossing, highest costing. <laughs> yeah, it cost. Um, it cost yeah, because Avengers. I was on the. Me and Adam were disagreeing about that as well. We we're talking about the uh, on the Patreon hangout, and he was saying how, um, you know, like everybody went and saw Parasite, or it was really popular. And I'm like, but but again, these are yeah. See, that's a great example. Uh, marriage Story budget eighteen million, box office two point three. Yeah, yeah, but no, that's fair. 
<laughs> I'm, just, good I'm just saying, I don't think these are. It's if it was happening all that, the time, that might be a marketing thing too, though, right? Like not a lot of people heard. Like my my mom hadn't heard of Marriage Story, I had to recommend it to her, and then she enjoyed it. I'm not again. I'm not trying to use anecdotes. Well, it's great. Like it like, critically was killer. You know, I think objectively, some films are are obviously good to some extent, and good good enough that quote unquote normal people, if you want to see that, mm-hmm. the general movie going audience would enjoy them. Would enjoy <laughs> would enjoy them if they had heard of them, right? Well, yeah. So, well, and Parasite yeah. won Best Picture, which helps a lot for marketing. Yeah, so I think there's a marketing aspect to it too. It I is. Don't even it think, is. I don't think I don't think Best Picture necessarily. I just think that studios who are making superhero movies confidently throw lots of money at the marketing whereas you know and i think that just helps obviously but it does it does whenever you have hot cakes you know they'll sell them until people get sick of hot cakes and then they'll switch to some other kind of hot cakes yeah and there's a hope for that i mean like i said i don't love these movies i talk about them as much as i do just because they eat up like 30 percent of the market share of all movies mm-hmm. but I just want to give more credit to the general movie going audience that's all Okay. I'm trying to, at least. Well, no, I honestly, I think part of why I'm glad that you and I are on a podcast together is I think that I am, like, four standard deviations more cynical than you. So I think it really is a different uh, perspective there. I think I'm, I'm trying to be less cynical. I, I I grew up as a very cynical teenager for a lot of reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, that may be explored in this podcast at some point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, then, but then, like, I've gotten there and I'm trying to, like, taper down. I'm trying to be more charitable and more, like, you know, I've just, I'm, I, I don't know, like, I, I was an asshole for a while, and I'm yeah. still an asshole, Me but too. I'm trying to be a more understanding asshole. Well, I'm yeah. trying to f- draw the line where, or make, I don't know, try to keep a box now where it's like, there's people who like things I don't like, and it's okay, and yeah. I'm not a fan of the stuff that they like. For some reason, Justin Bieber still sells out stadiums. I wish that wasn't the case, but it is. Um <laughs> And I'm not trying to say that those people are all stupid and bad people, but, you know, they exist and they have, again, the way they want to interact with media is different than how I want to interact with media. I want to be pushed and challenged, and that takes a level of engagement that is in direct opposition to, well, this is exactly what people complained about when they worked on, like, community or with um, Arrested Development, that they were competing against Everybody Loves Rain. And you watch those shows right. for totally different reasons. Like, you're not like, oh, man, I love the witty jokes and everybody loves Raymond and I can't wait to say. Yeah, like, everybody loves Raymond is what I have on in the background while I'm making dinner or whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. And these days it's like someone had a great tweet the other day. They were like, Netflix should have a section for movies I can watch while I'm on my phone. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Because there's a lot of people man. who want to engage with it that way. How about that Quibi? You guys on you guys on Quibi, the, the streaming exactly. platform you can only watch on your phone. What the fuck is that? Yeah, doesn't it use vertical? Who gave them like eight billion dollars? It's insane. Probably not David Lynch. No, not. you know what? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it was not David Lynch. I think this is a good guess <laughs> on our list of. How uh, great would that be, though? Right? Yeah. If he oh, was just like the a one full one eighty, yeah. <laughs> like Bill Maher pray, praying in a church. It's like, it's like that yeah, I'm kind making of thing. Blue Velvet 2 for Quibi. <laughs> well, yeah, you'd have to assume it was like his, uh, he had like a long plan on it. <laughs> it was like, I'll go tell everybody that I fucking hate it and everyone will think I'm a dick. And then I'll I go. I do fake. like Lynch playing the long con with, he, with, <laughs> with 25 Quibi years between the seasons of uh, Twin Peaks, man. Yep. True. Mm-hmm. On the year and got almost everyone back. Yep. Got me. Uh, well, I mean, like uh, uh, cast wise. It's really oh nice yeah, yeah. Play. A lot of these people, like some of them, hadn't really done much work since then. Not a lot, and like the log lady fucking died while they were making it. That's that's our. Right. Because so, she was you know, 104 years old. <laughs> but I, I mean, I completely agree with you. I've hated these movies forever. Um, I think they're just so unbelievably formulaic and boring. But that's what I'm kind of getting as that again. If I became Paul Feig, it'd be like, okay, well, what if we were doing like you said a rom com? Like I don't think that's it's impossible. Can we probably say Feig on the podcast? What's that? Can we say Feig on the podcast? Is that is that word okay? <laughs> it's um, I never know how to pronounce that guy's name. Hey, Gail, quit being a Feig. Well, who was? <laughs> there's also I, a I Feig, know. right? Feigs are good. I like Feigs. They're a good. Uh, they're a good. They're raisin, right? It's a, yeah. Think... No, it's um, it, it, it's a uh, Brad Pitt in Snatch trying to say a gay slur. <laughs> Feigs, yeah. you like Feigs? <laughs> 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 Which what they call them is like insensitive the whole time too. So <laughs> the um, yeah man. So that's kind of you know that's what I've been thinking about lately is that I think 
they should try oh, yeah, doing yeah like if you, yeah, if you are bound if you are bound to making superhero movies and and there's no way to stop that which you might as well is. yeah make yeah, them, which yeah. they are exactly yeah and like you might as well do something more interesting than you're doing because like yeah it, you know what if you made uh five more avengers movies the same as you have they're mm-hmm. all going to make money. Fine. I guess there's no monetary motivation to deviate from it. But from the sake of like the slightest artistic integrity, like just to do something that might be interesting, just yeah, put them in a genre film. Like a whodunit. I, I, like I want to see a whodunit. Sure, superhero. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Knives. Like I think superhero that'd be cool. knives out. Superhero. Yeah. Why else. not? Get Ryan. Dude, you could do superhero parasite. Sure. Think about that would the be stuff pretty they, hilarious. Think about the stuff they try to do in some of the bigger movies, right? Like the first X-Men, there's everything is an allegory for either homosexuality or racism. And so it's like, imagine making it like a parasite style movie. And then again, we have superpowers. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they, yeah. Have they done much with like class structure? Not really. Well, and I think the X-Men try to do, I, I guess same it's thing. It's just yeah. so vague. It's always through the allegory of being, you know, yeah. mutants and the humans hate the mutants and stuff. Like literally in the second one, one of the mutants' mom, the fire boy, his mom is like, "Have you tried not being a mutant?" That's pretty funny. Like it's a very <laughs> obvious nod to. Yeah. We we have to th- send you to to mutant conversion camp. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pray pray those extra <laughs> genes away. That's exactly <laughs> it. That's exactly it. So I think that it can be done. Um, no one's trying to do it because it's not been necessary up to this point. But I think it will be. I think that superhero fatigue is hitting and there's people who uh i know who have, you know anecdotally but who have liked all the movies up to this point but said that they don't plan on seeing the next wave because they're like you know what Endgame game kind of finished it yeah i'm i'm done yeah there are definitely going to be people that are done with because it was a big finale and now it you was know, the not climax right? and now yeah, you need not every post- post- to get back on- <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're not all ready to get back on board with like a whole new thing and there is absolutely going to be superhero fatigue. It's taking longer than other things, but with every other situation like this, the fatigue comes. Like they're vampire fatigue, zombie, zombie fatigue. It People happens with everything. Yeah. Remember when Batman was like a bigger friend? Like they're just a Batman movie every two years for like in yeah, the eighties. Like that was like massive. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Kevin Smith had a good point about that. He was like, "Thank God." Batman and Robin came out and bombed as hard as it did because if it killed, there would have been five more just like it. For sure. And it bombing and going away and basically ending the Batman craze is what allowed a vacuum for Chris Nolan to come in and actually Man, make like, the first. I kind of wish Batman. there were five more Batman and Robins though, because that movie's pretty funny. It is. You know, R.I.P. I... Joel Schumacher. We love oh, him. yeah. Rip Joe. Are we going to take bets on where in the in memoriam he will show up? First. Or last, but I will not accept anything else. But remember last year we thought the same thing, but then they had like someone really random in last. But they had like yeah, a second to last. Yeah, they do that now because like, they, they, yeah, try they, to, they try to say like they're yeah. not doing it in order yeah. of importance, even though yeah. it mostly is. Mm. If they really the they really believed that, what they would do is they'd literally just get a random number generator and just click a button and have them <laughs> populate randomly. That's what they would do if they really, you know. Care. I mean, so, it should just be one long picture of Fred Willard start to finish because that's the only one I care about. Seriously. Seriously. Fred Willard is a treasure. A goddamn treasure. Well, I haven't watched the Oscars. Um, I don't know. I think I got disillusioned when I was in high school. So I have watched the last three Oscars through your guys' commentary. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, just, I oh. really don't. I don't think I'd be watching them if I wasn't commentating them. In fact, I know I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. I just couldn't imagine what value they really add anymore. I mean, as an old white person myself, I like to know what other old white people think are the best movies. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that loud ass notification just came through for you guys. Yep. Uh, something, yeah. I don't know how to. Is there a way for me to do like no notification noise or whatever? Go to your mixer. I'll have to figure that out. Just uh, um, de- delete system 32. Oh, okay. Sweet, 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 sweet. I, I don't know. Like, I think there's something to be said. Like, the Oscars obviously are clearly a farce at this point. But but there's, but there's a lot of people watch them, right? It's a platform. Mm-hmm. So when you have a platform, there's inherently value there. So you have to, you know, so like we have, so, sure. so, and it's a, it's a vicious cycle because there's value. So you have to pay attention to it and then you pay attention to it. So, so it gets more value. So it's yeah. like, you know, you kind of get in this 
weird cycle thing. But yeah, I mean, that's people watch it. So, you know, it's people. Well, and in a world where there's no Oscars, it's probably uh, Parasite doesn't get all of that viewership that it did. Probably if there's no Oscars. Definitely less. Yeah, definitely probably less. If there's no Oscars, there would be some parallel show. You know what I'm saying? Like, of people course. like awards. You yeah, know? we have the Golden Globes anyway, even though there is an Oscars. That one's yeah. even better for us. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no. Hey, like you leave the Hollywood, Hollywood Foreign, Foreign Press, Press Association alone. They're a real organization. Yep. Yep. They're not just a bunch of rich people who wanted to meet celebrities thirty but years ago and what, made up a thing. That's what the Oscars basically is too now. You know, I guess the Oscars is just an older Golden Globes. <laughs> yeah, it's just I don't know. It's just such a circle joke. That's the the part that pisses me off so much. It's just I don't know. It's like it feels like it's so political and not even just in like a, a social way it's also just kind of this like we don't like adam sandler because he generally doesn't make the kinds of movies that win oscars so we're gonna not even have him be a nom because we yeah. just in general don't like him and it's like well fuck you because that even was he a, fucking rocked that was a best actor performance you know so to me it's just so political and again we've seen with the exception lately of um uh shape of water and parasite which not even necessarily like Parasite because it's a highly political film and very relevant. You know? It's like Green Book. It's purely political. Like it was annihilated by its competition. Like three other movies that were nominations deserved it over Green Book. Oh yeah. I forgot what they were. But I looked them up and I was like, God damn, how did Green Book win? Was what well, was that? Uh, was that the three billboards year? Let's look it up. When no, that was twenty. That, that was three billboards. Right, twenty. Wait, when was three billboards? Three billboards came out twenty seventeen. Okay. So it would have been so the 2018 Oscars. 2019. So yeah. So what came out? Uh, Roma. Yeah. Yeah. Roma which is good. interesting because Roma could have been the first. That was yeah. one language, right? Yeah. yeah. I thought, yeah. and I thought it was going to win, and then, and, and also because it won a bunch of awards leading up to Best Picture, and Green Book won nothing, and then Green Book won Best Picture. It was really weird. It's I just mean, a I, man movie that even the family like complained about. Yeah, well, it's it's right down the middle. It's fine. There's two like both uh, lead actor performances are good, um, but it's really just like a pretty accessible right down the middle movie that. Uh, yeah, there were. So what was better than it? So uh, of the nominees, nominees the alone, the far. favorite Roma. Favorite was um, well, those are definitely better. Actually, it's kind of a weak year for nominees, but I feel it like really there was, were actual though. good movies that year. Because A Star is Born is just every bit as lame as uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. And um, Vice was, I don't know, the same thing. Just like, okay, I watched it. But that's how I felt. If Vice was a 6 out of 10, like a meh, then Green Book was like a 5. And the other thing is, like, I'm just, those kinds of movies feel so dis, or, like, unearnest to me it's like the kind of movie i would make if i was like i want to go win an oscar oh it's definitely an oscar movie like a lot of movies are made to win oscars and that's one crash really started oh. that it was fucking like we're crash. gonna win a fucking oscar not yeah speaking of movies with the same name not even the best movie named crash exactly what are you thinking of david cronenberg like 1996, people jerking off to car crashes, way better. Oh, yeah. Hell it's funny because yeah. that's the one I think about when people oh, say people crash. Because like, oh, that's funny. Because yeah. I haven't seen the other one. Dude, it is so bad. It's like worth doing a best of the worst style like commentary on. It, yeah, it's it's it so annoying. <laughs> well, I forgot who, who put it, but someone brought, put it really perfectly. They're like, the movie tries to tackle racism, but it yeah. presents racism as if it's it only exists with an, an individual being a hyper racist towards a group of people versus uh, it being really more of a systemic problem, which is what it really is. Yeah, no, it's but, like the opposite of systemic and crash. It's just like yeah. the, there are these certain, there are specific, very racist people and everyone yeah. else is cool. And I run it like me as a black person, my experience with racism is only through the filter of me running into like a clans person, you know, versus <laughs> it being like, Oh, well, you know, you grew up in Harlem, which has its history in projects which failed. And so all these black people who, you know, because of racism, were in a poor position, never got a chance to move up out of those positions. And then you had things like redlining, which became illegal, but they didn't move all the black people after redlining became illegal. So they all were still stuck in those redlined areas, you know, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Those are more of the racism issues that people have today than running into like a Klansman, you know, who doesn't want to sell you milk because he's a racist. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Or things like you go to get a job and they are like a small like law firm with all white guys. And so they just have this feeling where it's like, um, I don't know if you're going to be a good fit. You know, you don't really make sense yeah. with everyone. This other guy seems like he has better energy with everybody and they kind of understand each other more. This guy listens to hip hop. I don't know what to do with hip hop, you know, kind of <laughs> thing. Like, those are yeah. the issues that we run into these days and what Crash was trying to present, which was like a yeah, cartoon then, world. Then crazy Matt Dillon. <laughs> exactly. Crazy Matt Dillon. Right? And he exists, but he's not like, you know, there's not a whole culture of people who are having like issues on a on a grand scale because there's too many yeah. Matt Dillons running around. And the Matt Dillons get called out quickly normally. Yeah. Except in the police force. Then they just uh, get to do their own thing kind of. <laughs> well what's really what's really hard with any kind of thing like the police force is that basically what's wrong with gangs um, or tribes. People are super tribal. So when you become a cop, you're now part of the cop tribe over anything yeah. else, you know. Um, I used to be in the National Guard, so it's like it's the armies like that too. Like you know, sure. you see the movies are like you're no longer black or white or brown, you're green. You know, so like mm -hmm. this is my crew, and depending on how tight you guys are and how us versus them your mentality is, is when you get to the point where you'll start being like, well, my friend killed somebody, and I'll keep quiet because we're all in skulls together. Yeah, so that kind of shit. Yeah, <laughs> I mean those. Yeah, are, saying it. There's not like, These are my opinions on. Yeah, there's also like the the classical like position of authority aspect that feeds into it as well for police people, like with the the classic Stanford prison experiment, which I don't, which I have I have my issues with, but in this instance, I think definitely you applies. have your issues because you did the experiment and you were a prisoner yeah. and everyone was mean to you. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty why you much. have your issues. Yeah, it's I a good experiment. Them. The experiment works. I think the experiment as presented is faulty, but there's other meta things in the experiment that are very valuable. And I yeah, think, for I instance, agree. the guy who played the warden wasn't supposed to be a part of the test, but if you include him in the test, then there's a lot of interesting stuff with him. And that was the thing that his friend called him out for, and he quit the experiment, or so he says. She was like, no, they're acting like this because you're actually being the warden and getting them to be like this. You know, so mm. it's like a double blind study that you did on yourself. Yeah, right. the, forget his name, but yeah. Um, yeah, uh, no, John, it's weird. John Stanford. <laughs> all right <laughs> um yeah i don't know it's it's weird because we're kind of creeping up on this this larger topic of film and how it relates to setting the tone for society if you see what i'm saying like yeah. what is what is the acceptable social mores and how can we communicate that zeitgeist through film is kind of the territory that we're we're kind of we're, we're creeping up on in a sense because those are yeah. films that are coming out like green book crash from what i understand mm -hmm. uh where it's like Moonlight. someone's trying to interpret and set the tone for some sort of i think it's like a sanity check almost right like i understand why it exists i understand why someone felt the felt the need to be like no this is right this is virtuous and therefore it must exist and therefore i must create it and then other people look at it and, say, and they have the same feeling they go like yes, this is right, this is good, we're going to amplify this, we're going to give it accolades, that kind of thing. Um, and I think there is a place for that. But 100%. Then, but then you have to be like really careful how you broach that, because you can't just willy-nilly everything that you agree with be like, yeah, that's good, let's just do that. And no matter how like how it's written or how lazy or, you know, I don't know. It's it's just one of those things where I think there is a place for that kind of stuff because as a society, whether we like it or not, we're always trying to reinforce good behavior within yep. ourselves. Like we all we're always trying to reward each other. Like you know, even like in conversations by by the way that we talk to each other, by commending each other or making faces or reacting to so how we we're always trying to reinforce what we perceive to be virtuous behavior. Um, and so it makes sense that film as a macrocosm of that tries to do the same thing in some instances. But then you kind of run into this larger question of like, well, when are you kind of, you know, dictating what should and shouldn't be uh, proper behavior and that kind of thing. And I think that's what people get upset about. I think that's what conservatives get upset about when they look at films like Parasite and they go like, they're trying to instill Marxism or something. Mm -hmm. It's like, come on. We're just trying, that film was just trying to make, you know, it was, first of all, an art film before anything else. But like the political Agreed. statements that I was making were, were that just that. They were political statements. They weren't like the vir virtuous, you know, like this is, you know, let's convert. Like there's no like malice, you know, in there. It's just well, like there's no someone's opinion. 
they, it never tells you here's what you should do instead. Exactly. It just points out that there yeah. is a problem, and that everyone, even conservatives, should be able to agree that there is a problem. I, they should, but well, no. one one thing like Jordan Peterson, for instance, was talking about. He was saying that the thing that the left and the right should be able to get, agree on is that even rich people don't want riots. So it's like even the rich should be able to agree that we don't want so much um, inequality that it leads people to feel like there's no other option than to light things on fire. Because when it gets like that, your wealth doesn't save you. Like you run out of wealth, you know, the whole economy falls apart. People murder you. Like yeah. you want things to be, you know, there's some homeostasis and we lose homeostasis when all of the funnels into just a handful of people. How about heterostasis? Well, that's what we that's have. What, that, that's what that's what I'm into. <laughs> that's what, we have non-binary stasis. <laughs> and um, well, so I think that the problems are because it's funny. We talked about this a little bit on the uh, the hangout as well. I was saying how I it's not some of these things. It's not that I disagree with them specifically. And I think a good example is to compare something like Crash or um, I'm trying to think of another really preaching. I don't know. Do you have an example? Skin. I don't know. That. Is that the short, right? <laughs> yeah. OK, great. Skin suck. So skin versus parasite. And it's like, they're both extremely preachy. Like, um, they're both very about the, the political topic that they're talking about. And parasite doesn't annoy me at all. And so um, I think that the big two things that I look out for that piss me off when I see them is if they either come across pretentious or if they come across cynical, as in they didn't really care about the topic. They just were trying to win an Oscar. And they're like, oh, if we make a movie like Green Book, we'll win an Oscar. Right. I, I try not to read too much into the motivations of because I don't know what the people who wrote Green Book were thinking mm -hmm. genuinely. Like I, I can only speculate and we could speculate that, you know, it was just Oscar bait. I'm sure the, from a production standpoint, like a mm -hmm. producer looking at that film goes, yes, this is kind of this is Oscar worthy. But from a writing perspective or creation of the story, I think there was some other stuff going on behind the scenes that I'm not that familiar with. So I wouldn't be able to speak confidently on the intentions of its genesis um yeah they but, got a lot of crap from the family but there are some things that are more that are less that are less ambiguous than that for example you have like all these didn't dinesh d'souza make a film called like hillary's america or something like there's yeah, film there's there's films like that which are explicit you know in that what they're trying to do and i feel like if we're talking about movies that have a political message and that maybe being not the best thing. I think we start with films like that, where it's like, okay, this is just clearly mm -hmm. somebody's political agenda. It's not even masked at trying to be a film or trying to be art. It's just something else. Yes. And then you have That's a more propaganda. subtle, you have a more, exactly, it just becomes propaganda, which is yeah. what people like to claim that, you know, uh, whatever green book or joker yeah. is you know they're like oh that's just or parasite oh, oh it's propaganda it's like that's not that's come on that's not propaganda like you know what i'm saying like well, it's a more it's, a, it's just a subtle it's a more subtle difference and i think we should be able to distinguish these things there should be a gradations of like okay we have hillary's yeah. america on one end and right. we have like i don't know uh enter the void on the other right you know <laughs> something where it's like completely just things that have yeah. nothing to you know and okay I mean, we can place a film somewhere on that spectrum and then discuss the merits of the societal issues that it's trying to tackle and how gracefully or tactfully it manages to do that that sure it can be up to the viewer i think to some mm -hmm. extent i think I you pointed a, out a bias in my end what's that i was I, I found a list of uh the worst oscar bait movies of all time oh, it's not oh, a bad see. list I, number That's one it. is crash <laughs> no even Liz else was talking about it yeah yeah Crash, Seven Pounds, Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close. I forgot that got nominated for Best Picture. Jesus. 9-11 movies. 9-11 movies. Uh, Theory of Everything. J. Edgar. The Soloist. Yeah, some of them is not because they're probably What's, what's the Soloist? The Soloist is Jamie Foxx as an old homeless violinist who Robert Downey Jr. Oh, saves. Oh, oh, God. Which is yeah. really funny because it, it came out like blind right side. before white saviorism became a thing. Yeah. Before people started complaining about white saviorism, it was like yeah, the, and like the, yeah, the soloist and the blind side are both on that list, and that is like the height of white saviorism. Yeah. Which I I don't know, I'm mean, not gonna get to that, but it's um yeah, I think my issue that I'm having is that if I find the execution of the film to feel, in my interpretation, as lazy, it's hard because I also don't want to throw around the word lazy too often because even really crappy movies are hard as fuck to make. Oh, yeah, but, they, t they take time and effort regardless. And skilled people. But for me, where it comes across as like they're just doing the minimum they have to do to 
push out a movie and it's mostly the um, political statement they want to make that comes out, that's when my brain goes, oh, propaganda. So I immediately call something like Green Book propaganda, which is a fault on my own. Like, you're right. I should have more nuance about that. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's uh, here's what I would say about that is that I think we are so I think when we when you when you love film and you watch enough movies, you get so keyed in like to the, the nuance of what makes a good movie that it becomes difficult to like broaden and look at a movie from the perspective of, of an average moviegoer who doesn't like movies as much or doesn't watch these things. Mm -hmm. I think there's like to an average mo like to to a to an eye that is more, you know maybe more refined if you want to put it that way aesthetically to film uh, or an ear that's to writing watching a film that is clunky that is written in a very kind of clunky and and political way that's a little bit not very subtle it's ugly to you and you yeah. immediately are able to attribute and point out what makes it fail it's like this is too this is too overt this doesn't mm -hmm. work and then you're you know because you you're trained because you, you like those things and you watch them a lot but and that's why and when you do that and then you kind of immediately go like, aha, well, then this must be an extreme, right? This is because I, I understand what good movie making, good filmmaking is. This is kind of the other side of it. This is not good filmmaking. This is bad but then, filmmaking, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But then, and then that's fine from an, a, some sort of objective standpoint. But at the same time, it's a trap door because you're falling into this binary, which isn't necessarily true for most people who are not as refined as you in the way that you view film or listen to scripts and stuff like that. So I think that's why there's like a, a bit of a, a tendency to be like, yeah, I mean, that feels like propaganda, but it's like, actually, let's let's try to chill. Let's take an objective view of it. Can we think of something that's more propaganda than that? Or, or you know, or something that is as far away from that as possible. Let's see if we can place this somewhere. Like, that's how I, tr I try to do that. I, I also, you know, think i'd like to think that i have an, a decent eye for film and i also love movies but it's really that's the hardest thing for me to do is to watch a movie like i don't know anything about movies uh, and i try to do that sometimes because mm -hmm. i think it's a good it's a good exercise uh just to try to just to try to consume it all just the raw data that's coming at you rather than trying to pick it all apart and it's a weird exercise but i think it's worth trying mm -hmm. it reminds me of a, pic, uh, of a picasso quote he said that like because uh, by the time he was, you know, like quite you know, like my age, basically, like he, he was just he could paint anything to perfection. And he said, like, I spent years training to paint like a master and, and now I'm going to spend a lifetime. And then I spent a lifetime training to paint like a child. Uh, and, it, and, yeah. and for him, for him, it was just a question of like reframing the way he saw things. And I think that's really cool that he became such a such a master at, uh, aesthet aesthetician. I guess that's the yep. word, aesthetician, that, and he became, you know, so he's, he could paint anything so well that mm -hmm. he was like, nah, fuck this. Everything is wrong. Like the way I'm looking at things is wrong. It just fell into some sort of hole and he dug himself out of it and started painting like insanity. Yeah. And, and it, yeah. you know, it still worked. And it's like, well, yeah, it's good for you. But yeah. Well, he know. became a really good deconstructionist. Yeah. Totally. And and would he even would he be regarded the same way if he was just if he stayed just a really yeah. good realism painter? I think like who knows? Different. I think he would still have become extremely famous, but for but not the for same way. Art style. I think I he wanted know. to make a statement. He you know like how artists yeah. are. They're like no, it's not about like the perfection mm -hmm. of it. I wanna I wanna say something, and I think yeah. like that's that's more what he was trying to achieve, and he did, rather than being like well, really that's why good. I don't mind movie uh, creators trying to say something instead of just making like a you know cool looking movie or something and yeah. that's why i do defend the idea of making movies like crash because i think that's part of the point of art i think a lot of artists are in essence like activists and you use art to you know show. art is also a great way and jokes also for like comedians they're great ways to put a mirror up to society mm -hmm. and so like parasite and even more so um something like um like snowpiercer as far as taking it into a totally different allegorical way and showing you like, hey, this is this thing you're interacting with and here's a different way to look at it. So maybe you actually notice it. You're still yeah. in the trees and the woods with uh, social issues that we're having right now. Um, that showing you this other thing that you can look at with fresh eyes could be a better way for you to reabsorb what you're actually looking at all the time. Yeah. And so I think you're right. I think I'm attributing uh, too much of the writer's intent or the creator's intent with i'm conflating it with the quality of the movie and someone could have had all of the same kinds of intentions as bong joon ho and just made a shitty movie it's totally yeah, yeah. Good. 
Yeah, a lot of it comes to, yeah, it really does come down to the quality sometimes. You, you well, and the thing is, the the better the quality, the, the more you can get away with otherwise. And exactly. people aren't aren't going to yeah. be thrown off by it. Yeah, because I, I talk about those like strong female characters. Like almost every time I see it on TV. Name one. <laughs> okay, so Ripley is a great example, right? <laughs> like I I don't think anybody finds Ripley as a really like there's a lot of dude bros who would be offended by like Ghostbusters 2016 who thought think Ripley's dope. I have the yeah. same feelings for uh, The Favorite. I fucking love The Favorite, and it is an unbelievably strong feminine movie. I love that um, movie. Yeah, so, so good. good. I'm a huge Yorgos Lanthimos, you know, fanboy right now, and it's. Just, I like how it's like, Yorgos's most straightforward movie, but it's still fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's interesting because it's um, it's like the top end of weird for a normal movie. Exactly. Yeah, and but then like lobster, way like way low for him. <laughs> way low for him. Like uh, Killing of a Sacred Deer is. Uh, Amazing. Now that's a Yorgos movie. Very weird. That's a Yorgos movie. And Dogtooth is, is yeah. Uh, those two, I think, are some of the more inaccessible movies. But yeah, he. Um, I'm trying to think. Like, there's another. I don't know. That happens constantly. Like, especially in TV shows, like Batgirl and stuff like that. There's a lot of in Supergirl or Superwoman, whatever. Um, I, I I will say that I think we. I think it's fine to 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 think of it in the sense of oh we we, we lack strong female characters. But I think that there is a, there's a subtlety there because it's not about having a female character that's strong. It's I, in my like from what I understand it, I think it's about having female characters with character. I think mm -hmm. that really is it. With because character, they, they, with they don't have to be. Yeah, they don't exactly. They don't have to be strong. They just don't need to. They, they just don't. They shouldn't be like an object that yeah. need that are used to drive the plot of the male character forward or have very little. Because uh, I think like that's the version of the word strong. So I, I, I think even like weak. So I think even weak female characters, but who are well fleshed out, are more yeah. interesting. Um, also, well, I guess Francis McDormand I mean, well, in Three Billboards is a is a character that I think of as, as a very extremely well written female character. Yeah. Francis McDormand uh, in Fargo. Sure. She, yeah, she's just a good actress. She whoops. Yeah, maybe acid. Francis McDormand and <laughs> maybe it's just her being good. <laughs> maybe it's just Francis McDormand. <laughs> well, she hitched her horse to the Coen brothers early and was in like every single movie, which especially is really... one of them. And by horse, I mean vagina. <laughs> I didn't Jesus. know that. Yeah. I had no idea. Oh, crazy. Oh, yeah, she's married go. to Joel Cohen. So she's like, are you sure Francis it's not Eton? Cohen. I, I know it's not Eton Cohen, but it might be Ethan Cohen. <laughs> Cohen. It, but but she is not married to the director of Holmes and Watson. <laughs> this much I know. I did not know this. OK, well, that's yep. interesting. But I mean, point being is that that character is so strong. And again, I don't I don't mean the usage of word strong like she you know punches hard. I mean that it's an actually yeah. well-developed character. And the character is strong. And she happens to be a badass in that movie um, and is like seven months pregnant you know and it's yeah. this cop it's amazing and so though but again not like that movie never smacks me in the face of like oh my god here's some feminist propaganda yeah and like were there any like i know the internet wasn't so big in 1996 but like yeah. even after the fact nobody was mad about it well no. the favorite that just came out and i don't remember hearing anyone being like oh no. another one of these freaking feminist movies and all <laughs> yeah, the guys exactly. are here. So, uh but birds of prey felt like that all day till sunday i haven't seen it Drove me crazy. Which shouldn't surprise you at this point. <laughs> Sorry, what's that number four grossing movie of 2020? Birds of Prey, are we talking about? Yeah, man. Made all that money. It must be good. Well, and that's a problem we have, too. As long as art is inexorably connected to money, we're just always going to have these kinds of problems. And if anything, I've been theorizing that like the death of the movie theater may be the best thing for the health of the art altogether. Because like for Tenet sure. won't come out because it won't make enough money on VOD. So if theaters completely go away, they just might not be able to make giant movies anymore. Yeah. And so they'll be forced be to make like what? Cheaper but good movies? That'd be crazy. <laughs> That's the hope. You know, you can't just keep, I don't know, making up for a good movie with just bigger special effects, you know. But what, what, but what of Michael Bay? Exactly. Right. Wherefore Michael Bay? <laughs> What sucks is like, why Michael Bay? <laughs> I think there's like, I don't know, because I just, I also know really relatively cheap action films that are awesome. Like, I loved Upgrade, for instance. You guys get a chance to see that? I didn't I see have it. Not. I, it, it looked interesting, but I, I really I didn't get it. to I think you guys should give it a try. It's not going to change your life or anything, but. Yeah, uh, Adam saw it. I think he liked it. Yeah, he liked it. Yeah. Yeah, he gave it a, he at least gave it a positive review. Didn't yeah, it have yeah. a different title? Like, no, I saw it was Upgrade. 
Like, like I feel like the title was changed at some point, but I could Upgrade be wrong. Upgrade or the unexpected uh, virtue of ignorance? You may be thinking of how hardcore turned into hardcore Henry. Maybe. Yeah, that might Maybe. be it. Yeah, Because hardcore was the GoPro all first POV right, movie. Right, right, right. Yeah, okay. action. Yeah. That, that Which is, is fun hand. as hell. That's a very fun movie. And another great example of it not needing to be a billion dollars. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't that. Like, for, for how cool it is and how much action yes. there is, I don't think it was that expensive, right? And Michael Bay wouldn't have thought to make a movie like that. You yeah. know, so it's like that mother or uh, necessity is the mother of invention, I think, can help with some of those. Also, mm-hmm. even for like a big budget kind of generic one, like I love um, what's it called? Uh, uh, Smoke and Aces. I really yeah. enjoy the movie. Very, very fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think there's a world where movies don't have to make. Two- well, they said they said something like it has to make back 200 million or 400 million to like break even to make it worth it. So that's part why they're holding it for so long. And it's like, yeah, if we that, stop making these movies, for Tenet, yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So if we stop making these $100 million, $200 million movies, you know, then maybe we do get more interesting takes. Because right now it's almost like, it's just like how Jaws was supposed to suck, but because they couldn't get the, the shark to work, they ended up having to make a good film on accident. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, uh, if they got everything they wanted, we probably wouldn't be talking about Jaws. Yeah, exactly. It would have been like a, you know, like a, a schlocky shark movie. Exactly. It would have been loads of shark, less of those... Um, character and town scenes uh, yeah there's so many movies that you can see that you're like yeah if they had budget they probably would have ruined it. you know mm-hmm. more cgi bigger explosions yeah that well that's so often the solution you just throw cgi at it but well, if you take that away it's very interesting there's movies i feel like they start like that where it's just like here's the couple of big scenes i want so let's write something to tie these scenes together yeah you know i've never seen a Spider-Man, you know, hanging out between the two Twin Towers. Let's, you know, put that in a teaser. <laughs> let, let, let's do that in the next Spider-Man. <laughs> we'll go back in time. Now, that's brave. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Um, closing up here, I had a couple more little things I was curious about. Some quick takes you guys had. Um, we have... Did we talk about Ryan Gosling's going to be the next Wolfman? I think you and I did briefly. Okay. What is Wolfman? Wolfman is one of the. You see, it's a, it's this man that is also a wolf. It's very exciting. It's Universal's old school like Dracula, creature from the Black Lagoon, oh. the Mummy. Wolfman was one of those, and the the Dark Universe has tried like multiple times. The Dark highly Dark. successful Dark Universe. Highly successful. The never missed a step Dark Universe. Technically, the first time they tried to do it was with Dracula Untold. And then yes, what happened is they didn't necessarily say we're not doing it anymore. They just like, let's be quiet because this movie didn't do so good. And we'll try to sneak in a soft reboot later. And then yeah. they did The Mummy. And we're like, let's just go as big as we can, get the biggest star we can. And yeah. it flopped. And it was terrible. Terrible. So they, and gave they also did a Wolfman like not that long ago with Benicio Del Toro. They did. But I, I guess. It just wasn't a plan for them to actually do like a universe shared universe. Yeah, no, it seemed like a standalone. It was just like, hey, we're just going to do this. Yeah. So what happens then? And that's part of why I think the plan was always for the Dark Universe to be like modern day. And that's part of why like Dracula Untold takes place modern day, half of it or whatever. So what happened is Blumhouse got involved and they ended up making The Invisible Man for only $7 million. And then it made $122 million in box office. Wow, it was only $7 million. I would have guessed considerably higher. Blumhouse has a rule that they basically don't make movies for more than $10 million. Yeah, I guess so. And so Blumhouse being the paranormal activity guys, they yeah. figured out what their niche was early on, which was just make really cheap movies like, or horror movies generally. Which is, oh, they're, they're the, Blum is the smartest guy in the world. He like he throws single digit millions yes. at 20 movies. Regularly. One of them makes $150 million. He's Cover set back. for years, and mm-hmm. then he just keeps doing that. And like, I assume Jason five. Blum is worth $70 billion <laughs> right now. Well, so him and, I forget the guy's first name, but, like, Wano, um, that guy's actually name. the one who wrote it, I guess. <laughs> 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 not a name. <laughs> Wah. <Wow. laughs> yeah, is he, um, like, the evil version of a different character? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it must be. It must be is like he a Wano. Waluigi type? Uh, that guy, Elite. Lee Wannell, Wannell, I don't know, W-H-A-N-N-E-L-L, Wannell. So he is the one who came up with this new Invisible Man with uh, Elizabeth Moss. 
And so now they're basically like, oh, that made a bunch of money. Let's restart this thing. So Oh, no. Actually, Don't tell me they're doing like an Invisible Man 2. Actually, first off, I've heard that they're doing an Invisible Man 2. And Elizabeth Moss is going to do the Invisible Woman, not connected. Okay, so. like, fuck all that shit. Like, I don't understand how a producer can look at that. I can't. I don't understand how a producer can look at, like, a business model that's so explicit in what it's doing, what Scoot just described, where it's like, hey, I'm just giving a little bit of money to a small creator uh, so I can see if, you know, if they have talent, if they can create something good. And then they create something good, and they go like, oh, that must have made money because the property is good, instead of because the person we gave yeah. it to just as a good director who now can handle a story. property forever. Like, what the fuck? How, how dense, how thick do you have to be to look at that and go like, oh, it must I can't believe that that's what we're missing. The Invisible Man, that's what everyone wanted this whole time. How could we have been so stupid? Yeah, that's what it was. There is a literal nursery rhyme about the, what, the goose that laid the golden egg. And people are still doing it every single time. Like, you get taught as a child, don't kill the goose, you know, or don't beat a dead horse. Like, we have sayings for these, and they still do it yeah. every single time. Yeah, it's like you said. It'd be like watching that movie and going, oh, I know the part that made it successful. You know what the it is? It's man part. <laughs> well, it's what Adam said about um, Kimba. He's like, a lot of the things people say that Lion King copied, it would have to mean that they watched, like, a, you know, a million yeah. hours of the show, and they decided, oh, that's the part that made it successful. That's what we're going to steal so that we're successful. We're going to steal yeah. a stampede. <laughs> like, it's so stupid. Right. It's the same thinking, yeah. Like, they must have just loved that suit. I guess we need more of that. Like, oh, my God. Like, it's, 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 idi it's so idiotic. It's so unbelievably idiotic. Like I can't, I can't believe they're doing that. They're like, all right, it, it is wild stupid. how stupid so many like rich, successful producers are. It's people in general, it's, I find it, like yeah. a lot of people just have no idea what they're doing. It's kind of insane. Yeah. Well, and it's so stressful too because it's like you know I don't know I just not that I would be a genius in there, but there are these kinds of decisions that get made where you're like, well, man, these guys get paid a lot of money, and I drive people around. Like, <laughs> I'll do that. Like, someone give me a shot. I can make those decisions. I I'll can do at girl. least as good as them. I at yeah. least like movies. Like, they don't seem like they obviously even like movies. No, they like money. They don't care about movies. <laughs> exactly. All right. So it's like, well, it's... mix it up, man. All right. Well, I'm going to let you guys get out of here. And, uh, yeah, let's been a let me give you a quick list of movies that are from 2018 that are better than Green Book and should have won the Oscar instead. Eric. Burning, Shoplifters, Roma, Isle of Dogs, Suspiria, The Favorite, <laughs> Climax, Museo, Under the Silver Lake, If Bill Street Could Talk, wow. The Sisters Brothers, Widows, Kien Te Kantara, Thunder Road, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs, Sorry to Bother You, Everybody Knows, Birds of Passage, First Man, Annihilation, Eighth Grade, Free Solo, that's wow. a documentary, uh, Searching, Hereditary, uh, wow, and, right. and your favorite movie of all time, Mandy. Yes. Mandy that's insane, for sure. That all of those movies are literally just better than Green Book. <laughs> like, Seriously. Yeah. That's Sorry insane. to Bother You is fantastic. Sorry to Bother You rocks. And out of control political. Like, super yeah. in your face showing you exactly what their political messaging is. And yeah. again, not one time annoying to me. No, yeah. Yeah, it deals with race and class. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And is yeah, and awesome. I fucking and, love and, it. And, and, and turning people into horses. Into the most fucking important. horses. <laughs> with giant horse cocks. <laughs> Can we talk about how amazing like Keith Stanfield is? I'm at the point where I don't think I've seen him in a bad role. No, he's real good. I uh, I actually recently watched uh, Short Term Twelve. Uh, right. It was it's 2013. It's um uh it was sort of under the radar, but it did very well critically, and it uh it was based on like an earlier short with um. And then when the director was making the feature length, uh, tried to get as many people back from the short as he could, got a few, uh, one of whom was Lakeith Sanfield, who had quit acting after Holy the short. Crap. But the that director got him back for that, and then he's been consistently acting and great since then. Also was built as Keith Sanfield didn't have the law yet. Mm. It's kind of funny. I'm looking at the cast here. It's kind of stacked. Oh, but, it's, it's it's this like it's all these like early roles of very famous actors. It's Brie yeah, Larson, Larson uh, Rami, Rami Malek, Malek girl, uh, yeah, uh, Keith Stanfield, Brooklyn and a couple of yeah. yeah, yeah, good movie. Good. Okay, yeah, I'll give it. I'll give it a shot because I I love the guy. Um, I first saw him in Atlanta, the show. Yep, yep. And his character is amazing. Oh, I lied. I first saw him in Get Out. Right. 
Yes. He's just in it for all of 10 seconds. So I forgot about it, but he's even good in that 10 seconds. Is he the get out guy? No. No, you racist. He is. The... <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see you all, uh, see you guys. <laughs> <laughs> he's the guy who gets mind jacked and tells the get out guy to get out. No, that's what I mean. He's the guy who says get out. Oh, sorry. I no, I know he's not the star. Daniel Cooper is the star. I'm not. Hey, look, man. Come on. Come on. <laughs> it's a fucking credit. And thus the failings <laughs> of the English language. Um, yeah. So I guess Pronoun confusion. Better... <laughs> got to figure out a better way to sign out. Um, you guys got any ideas? Um, I've been La Scott Henson. <laughs> I've been La Chad Gloria. <laughs> and I've been La Gaelle. There it is. <laughs> and... That's how the cookie crumbles. We did it. Perfect. Awesome, guys. <laughs> I'll see you in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Awesome, guys. Y'all have a good one, all right? Take all right, catch you later. I'm hitting the links. <laughs>